Welcome back, Clarity Coders. If you're following along, this is lesson two in our Open CV tutorial series. If you're not and you're just hopping in, this is what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to go over drawing boxes and identification on top of images or live video in Open CV. You see this in a lot of advanced object detection and AI programs. This is going to get us even closer to our final project of actually creating a program like that. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Now, if you weren't with us last time, we need to install OpenCV. So we're gonna do that with a simple pip install OpenCV-Python. Hit Shift Enter to run the cell. You shouldn't have to do this if you installed it last time. After that, we can go ahead and import CV2. Shift Enter, and we're ready to go. So the image that I'm gonna use here is this image that you see here with the penguins. If you don't have that, you can download it from the GitHub. You don't have to use this image. You can use any image you would like. And we're gonna pull the image in just like we did last time. We're gonna do image equals cv 2im read and then the file name. Now, one thing I wanted to show you here really quick is what happens if you have the incorrect file name or you don't navigate to the path correctly. If I add some gibberish here, and run this, you'll notice I don't get an error. And if I print that out, you'll see nothing shows up at all. If we look at the type of this image now, it's simply none type, so there's not a good error there. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the path correctly, and if you're not getting the results you expect, make sure that you actually have image data in here. So let's go ahead and clean up our path. Make sure you got your capitalization, everything fine here. I'll run that again. And then I'll run this type below and you can see that we have a NumPy array, which is way better looking than our none type. Now we're gonna show our image exactly like we did last time. So let's go ahead and add that in real quick. We're gonna do cv2.imshow. You can call the title of the window, whatever you want, and then pass in your variable of your image. And just like before, we'll do cv2.waitkey with a parameter of zero. So it's gonna wait until we close it. And we can do shift enter again to run this cell. Now, just like last time, you'll see it looks like it's kind of hanging. We'll reach down, grab that image. Just like that, you can see that we pulled in our ginormous image again. So now one thing that we're gonna do right away, just like last time, is resize it. And you can see that was successful as well. Now, of course, if we show the image again, it's a much more manageable size. So let's go ahead and try to add a square box like you see in all the object detection tutorials. Now, I added a markdown cell here. You can add these markdown cells to explain something that isn't code. So what we're gonna do is draw a square. And what you'll notice here is what we have to pass in is our X1 and Y1 coordinates for the top left corner of our square or a rectangle and the bottom, cor bottom right corner, which is our X2, Y2 coordinate. And that's wherever we want the box to go. Now in our programs, a lot of times we're gonna come up with these values dynamically, right? It's gonna find the object and then pass the coordinates back and we're gonna draw a square around it. In this example, we're gonna manually pass these in just to see how it works. So what I'm gonna do is add a green square here. So I'm gonna do cv2.rectangle. The first parameter is our image. Then the second parameter is our x1, y1 coordinate. The third parameter here is our x2, y2 coordinate. The fourth is going to be our color. I'm gonna do the classic green one that you're probably used to seeing in the object detection tutorials. So remember our color space is blue, green, red. So we're gonna do zero comma 255 comma zero. And the final parameter here we're going to use is the line thickness. We'll just give it a line thickness of five. Now you may notice something right away. First, I'm passing in our X1 and Y1 coordinates as a tuple, as my second parameter here. You can see that I picked an X1 coordinate of 432 and, an, and a Y1 coordinate of 216. And then for my X2, Y2, you can see I picked 524 and 285. How did I come up with those numbers? So what I did was I opened up the image in a program like Paint 
And you can see here that when I drag my mouse around, it's showing me the X and Y coordinate. Now this is different than our rows, which were vertical, and columns, which were horizontal. Remember, your X coordinate is horizontal and it's first and your Y coordinate is vertical and it's the second number. So all I did was I picked out a couple coordinates in here and here just to help us draw these squares. As you can see, I've already picked out these numbers. You could have done the same thing. So again, my first point is here. My second point is this tuple right here, my X and Y coordinate, my color and my thickness. Let's go ahead and run this cell and it actually does it in place. So you'll notice we didn't have to say image equals or anything like that. You'll notice it does give us some return values here. That's the output. And let's go ahead and go back up to our I am show line here and we can run this cell again. And you can see we've drawn the green square that you typically see in a live video feed. Now again, in a live video feed, it will work almost the same. It's except it's gonna be dynamic. It's gonna be constantly doing it on different still images. I'm going to go ahead and copy that line and we can do one more quick one here. So this time we'll do another penguin and I know that this penguin's X1 coordinate is 973. The Y1 is 259. The X2 is 1070 and the Y2 is 326. Let's do a different color just for fun. Let's go full blue, no green and full red should give us like a pinkish purple. Let's run this cell. And if we slide up here, we can show our image again. And you'll see we've added another square. Now, a lot of times you'll see these labeled as well. So we can use OpenCV to write text on our images as well. So for this, we're gonna use cv2.puttext. Now you'll notice anytime you want to see the doc string when you're in Jupyter Notebooks, you can do shift tab and you can see below what our parameters are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in our image that we want to use, the text that we want to display, the bottom left coordinate of where we want the text to start, then the text we want to use, the font size, the color, and the line type. So we're gonna pass in IMG. For our text, I'm just gonna put penguin. For the bottom coordinates, I want it to be below our green one, which I've already found in paint, so we're gonna use 432 for our X and 320 for our Y. This is passed in as a tuple again. Then to find our font, we can do CV2, and I'm just gonna push tab here. And you can see that some of my choices pop up. This is very helpful again in Jupyter Notebooks, just a short key to see what you're working with here. We're going to use one of these, which is all, they're all fairly ugly. We're gonna use the simple one down here. We'll do a font size of just one, a color of black. So we're gonna do zero comma zero comma zero. And then our line type of two. Now I'm gonna hold shift enter and run this cell. You can see we get some output again. We're not too worried about that. And if we show our image again, you can see that we've added the text penguin below our identification mark. Easy. We're gonna build on this in live video, but if nothing is harder than this, it's all just built upon this to identify our objects. One more that I'm gonna show you that I use sometimes, and that's to draw a circle. So we're gonna do cv2.circle. Again, we can shift tab and see what we're gonna have to pass into it. So we're gonna do image, 252 comma 252. Again, I just picked this from the image in paint. We'll do a radius of 50. Our color, you can make, again, this color anything you want. I'll just pick some random values. It has to be between zero and 255. So we'll do like 100 for our blue, 255 for our green, and five for our red. That's off the top of my head, so we'll see what it looks like. I'll give a thickness of five. We can shift enter and run this. And if one last time we slide up to our display image here, rerun this cell, and you can see that I've essentially picked green again. <laughs> That's exciting. This is why my videos are so entertaining. Let's bump that down to 100. There we go. So that brought up a good point here and something I wanted to mention as well. If we don't reload in this image each time we add something, if we rerun a cell but change something, it's going to change our image in general. So what I mean by that, we already had this rectangle here that was green. 
Let's say we wanted to change this and scoot it over a little bit, so we'll change the X to 400. If we rerun this cell without reloading in that image, you'll see that we just kind of overlaid that, that square. So we didn't erase the other square, we just added in a new square. So you wanna make sure if you're making big changes that you're actually reloading the image. So if you want to start fresh, you could rerun this cell up here that we load in our image. And now you'll see that we got our original ginormous image back. All right, that's all for now. I will see you guys again next week with lesson three. And until then, keep coding.